So I'm going to throw uh, four pounds canada, uh, can, canister. I notice having not done it for almost three weeks that my hand is weaker already. So I threw some pieces this morning and I was having to press a lot harder. And, and um, I decided to use my little arm rest elbow into the wall to assist in the centering and that's for perfect it works fine again so dampen the wheel head place it down in the center make sure it's sealed down somebody said they keep trying to do this and a ball of clay flies off every time they tried seven times but basically not an it, it, it must have much water underneath there it must be damp not wet all right Let's see how we go here Yeah, that's not too bad. So that's sealed to the wheel head now. That is the most important thing before you start pulling the piece up again. So I'm going to do the little cone. It's amazing, I don't really need the thumb that much. When I'm throwing, I never thought about it. It's the heel of the thumb you're using, not the thumb itself. That's more for gripping things. It's still sore, it stings if I touch the end of it. Although the end of it is totally numb because I think I cut through the nerve. There you go. Hear that little knocking, that's that pinhole, so I may have to re-drill this bat soon. centered. So I put that finger over top of that finger and I crunched that finger too. Well, I've been cutting lots of wood. So, okay, so. So by putting that finger on that one, it gives me a little extra pressure that I can do. And this clay is very stiff. I'm down to as far as I want to go, and then I open up. And this hand gets dry on there, so every so often I just get some more. But you've got to let go slowly when you let go. Yeah, this clay is getting old now. I bought it in the summer last year. And then I bring my finger from this side over to the center to recompress the base, which I've just stretched by opening it up. So I'm using the two fingers, that one and that one, to just come back across. And so I'm going in the opposite direction to what I did when I opened it up. And that seems to get rid of that weakness in the bottom where some people get S cracks, because I've never got S cracks except for when I first started to learn. So, we've opened it up. Then I move to this side, so the clay is running through my fingers. And you have to do this fairly sharp. It dries the clay very quick, so you've got to move up fairly quickly while the clay is still wet above you. Because my finger is actually drying it out too. So notice that, my finger's giving extra pressure on those two fingers by putting that one over there. And that finger is right behind there. So I'm not using fingertips in that pull. I was flying along the side. Yeah, that's why um, I did that hand building project with that large floppy ball. So keeping it tapering in, 
I'm going to work against that finger there with these two fingers on the outside. Press deep on the outside, and I'm now using my middle finger fingertips right opposite as well, but my forefinger is pressing along the wall. So two fingers inside, two fingers outside, and my inner forefinger is sliding up the wall just above where I've got contact. Oh, there's a lump there. You can probably see that there are marbling in this clay, so it wasn't mixed as well as it should have been. And there's a little hard lump in the wall too, and it is new clay. So, again, this finger and those two fingers are in contact opposite, but this finger's like that. So a wall is sliding down there and then the fingers have contact just there. And you pull. Fingertips, forefinger sliding just above there to kind of steady that wall a little bit. There's the bump. That's a hard piece of clay by the feel of it. You have to go down to the bottom because there's a little give in the wall down there too. So I'm going to wet it, so we've got a good amount of water. And then I'm going to use the rib because we have that little bump forming there. Now you'll start seeing that marbling. There's the bump again. It's not an air bubble, it's a lump of stiff clay. And that's it because as you can see with the marbling, this clay wasn't uh, pugged or mixed long enough. Actually it was pugged fine, it's just not, it wasn't mixed long enough. Now this is a canister, but it's actually gonna be a funeral urn. Somebody wanted a funeral urn, but just a regular canister. Yeah, it's funny how this hand, my left hand, because I hadn't thrown for three weeks, and I was very careful with it for the last three weeks, not to do too much, because I didn't want to knock it but it really weakened my hand a little bit just in a few weeks. So I'm just putting the edge of the rib in to open up that lip. If that was a, an air bubble, I would pop it out, but because it's a lump of solid clay, right there, you can see it. And you see the dark center and there's like a little um, circle of white clay around it and then the other clay, so we know we've got a dark lump of hard clay right there. Here we go, just the right size, perfect every time. So, God, they're all loose. Certainly is firm and placed down there hard. So, same again.
Now, when I say about the dampness of the wheel, look, this is a sponge. Squeeze it as hard as you can, so all the water comes out, and then you can spin it off, and then you drag a dry sponge over the surface, soak all that moisture up, pull it back, so you've got a damp wheel head, not a wet wheel head. Now, this is more clay than I think I need. A pound is a lot to make a little lid, but I'm gonna use this much anyway. Because I can make a big knob on it. And that's a debatable question. Do I need a knob on these? Because if it's gonna be a funeral urn, then basically it doesn't need a knob. That's just something that could get knocked off because it's never gonna be used as a jaw. So I'm just centering the same way. But I don't really need to curl on this one, but if I wanted to, you just do this again. And then squish it back down. Small pieces I don't really feel like I ever have to curl. Get it centered. It's going to be a lid. So there's a lid that has a knob, which I'll do now, and then I'm going to throw one without a knob. So I judge how much clay I'm going to leave for the knob by simply putting my finger in, going across, so pulling it across and then saying, well, that looks about the same good width for a knob. But if I come back a touch more, I can have enough to make a really big knob and it's drying out instantly. So you get some more water and press down. Don't go too far. You need about a centimeter of clay there. And then you can pinch with these fingers, but I can do it with three fingers kind of nicely just to pinch in, but don't narrow it too much because you don't want it to, you know, get wobbly. And I'll get rid of that little hollow area there. And then I can pull up again, make sure it doesn't get, you know, so it drags, otherwise you'll snap it off where the thin part is. And do this as many times as you want to get a tall knob. It doesn't have to be. But now I've got quite a long neck underneath the knob there. Just make sure you don't dry it out. You can always drag some water from the inside and do that and it will kind of lubricate it just for one extra pull. And then the top part, you simply press your finger down like that And you're giving yourself that kind of flat, wider knob so the lid doesn't fall off out of your fingers. People get arthritis as they get older. I don't have that in my hands, so thank goodness. Now I'm going to pull up again. So you want to give them a nice big knob to hold on to. There you go. That's like substantial. Now, for the actual inside that's going inside the hole in the top of the jaw, I just pull my fingers out. My little finger underneath here is creating that shelf. So, but I let this finger beat this finger so it's pushing it out. So we've got a shelf underneath there. And then the, the middle finger here is going to start flattening this wide edge at the top and it dries very quick, so you've got to get some more water. So see how far, my, going down to the first knuckle there, underneath there, I've got a very deep overhang. But the clay's quite thick, so it can easily stand up. So let's get the water off so you can see it a little bit better. Now the lid itself, the opening, is this point to point width there. So when I put that down, the inner should be inside that point and the outer edge should be way over past that point so the lid sits 
you know, foot, you know, on top of the wall of the pot and covers the wall completely, and maybe a little extra and all that. And that lid looks that looks pretty good, so I don't think I have to fiddle around with it. Get the dry clay off my. I need to clean my calipers. So that was the first try, I guess, and it worked out. But you know, I could just go more, I could pull it out a bit more, we could open this up a little bit more, I could make it slightly more defined and put this thing, I could pull up with this and push down with that. So we could make a taller overhang there. So the, in other words, the actual inside bit will f go down inside the jar a lot more. And then I can pull it out a bit more again if I want to. So you can fiddle. Then of course you don't want to fiddle too much. Let's see how much I changed it. <coughs> Probably not much actually. Oh, just a tiny bit. Yeah, but that was good. We've got plenty of wiggle room there now. Because you can fiddle around with these when you're trimming too. You can flatten that. This is thick enough so I can flatten it totally as well. And if you felt like it, you could put like a little spiral in here. So it'll give you a little decorative spiral on the top. Oh. But it's a funeral urn, so we don't have to have any of this. It's not really necessary. So round off bottom, hang it down. and press hard. And I think it's a great service that YouTube provides with all these videos, because I learn a lot. I watch videos all the time. I like watching Washington Street pottery videos. There's a lot of technical ones there. So I'm gonna make a lid, so I'll have to trim this one a lot more. But it's gonna have a, a bowl with a flange up. So that way there won't be a knob on it. So I press down on the middle. Don't go too deep. Come out. Put some water in there to lubricate. This could also have a sculpture on the top, the other side as well. And it's going to be a gentle slope on the inside, on the outside, once we turn it over, but I need a flange. So using these ribs, you can push down, sort of going down at 45 degrees there, causing it to flatten out and also get taller. Because my guess is this lid will be glued on the pot if it's going to be a funeral urn. So let's see about size again. So this time, this is the bit that's gonna go in the pot. So what do we have? Oh my gosh. Oh, there was a bit of clay there. I thought, I thought I'd done it perfect again. Well, it's pretty close to perfect, so I'm gonna leave it. So that will now be turned the other way up and put on top of the jaw. Uh, it's a bit sticky to show you that now, but I'll wait a couple of hours maybe and let me show you a quick version of that. So in other words, the lid is going to sit that way up on top of the jaw. All right. Okay, I actually, um, if this is loose, oh, it is loose, yes, yeah, so I will trim it not on the bat. Sometimes I trim them on the back. If this will grip, I can just trim it like that. Um, so giffing grip holds there. Can you see the top? There you go. So I'm trimming the, the pot on the edge, so the lid on the pot. Um, which makes it convenient because I can just flip it upside down to see if it fits.
I always dry them overnight with the lid sitting on the pot as long as they firmed up enough so they don't stick together. Stick it to my fingers. This clay is very porcelain like. There goes my finger. Let's see if it fits. Oh, very close. You can also, if you leave plenty of thickness on the rim, you can trim the inside of the rim of the pot. So if you're really worried about how thick that area is, which I am a little concerned, because I don't throw my pots real thick. I've already trimmed a lot off that area there. So let's see how it goes. Yeah, it's, it couldn't be trimmed anymore. And it fits inside there now anyway, so we've got a jaw that fits. But if what I'm saying is, it doesn't hurt, to just knock off a little bit inside there and then your lid will have a bit more space because remember the I fire with glaze on stilts with glaze over the entire piece so I have to remember that there will be a thickness to that glaze but that's got a good looseness to it so that fits perfectly and uh, these are a bit soft I think we'll have to see on the bottom um, well, it's borderline. Okay, so let's see if we can trim. If it sticks to the tool, no, it's trimming fine. Softest area in the center there, and that's not too bad, it's not sticking. Now, when you're glazing, you have to remember if, if you have to dip something in a glaze upside down, you should have something to grip onto of, of that area there. So, what I do is I just carefully put an undercut just about there. So I can put my fingernail into that little area there. And just get rid of that and then just pull it in a bit more. So it's like a little foot that sticks out a bit further that you can grip with your fingernail and plonk it in upside down in the glaze. Um, and I think I should be able to flute these. Let's have a little go. It's perfect. So you're taking some weight off the piece by doing this as well. I used to have a tool, like a cheese cutter, that you could do this with. It had a roller on it, and you can do fl fluting with that. But this potato peeler is perfect. That will not show up after the firing, but isn't it really cool? And then down the bottom here, because I wasn't very even about doing that, let's take a tool. I don't want to catch the uh, trimming, the, the arms of the gipping grip, but I'm going to come up. And I'll be able to feel when I hit the flute in. That's it, just there. Let's see if we left a line. Not much of a line. 
Where is oops, got this little tool there as well? Yeah, we got actually maybe we should do a little chattering thing right at the top there. I just finished it off nicely actually, do a bit more. And then this is my line tool. Let's see what that looks like. There we go, not too bad. And like I said, this is um, actually going to be a funeral urn. Except for I have the lid of the other one, the other style to do as well. This is the one with the other style lid. And this one I left it really thick there, and it's not fitting in there as tight as I wanted to. So I'm going to trim that. Like I just said, we can trim the inside. Let's see now. Oh, perfect. But I'm going to make it a bit loose because I actually prefer it since, like I said, the glaze has a thickness too. So I can take a little bit off inside there as well. some looseness to it now and that's what I was looking for and so this one because it's a funeral then you don't really have to have a handle on it because the thing is only going to be put on and off once and then it's going to be buried the um, most creative funeral urn I ever did was when a couple, um, the one, I think it was the husband who died first, um, and the wife wanted a teapot, because they always had tea at three in the afternoon every day, and they always wanted to sail around the world or go around the world together, so they wanted me to make a teapot that they could then have somebody take them out into the ocean, throw it overboard, and the couple could go around the world in a teapot. It's very romantic. I think that's good. Of course, now I could actually do some decorative stuff on the lid. So we can make an extra shoulder just with the trimming tool there. So we've got a line. We could do a little. Some nice chattering there. Let's do a couple of lines to finish it off.
I know you probably can't see that very easily, but I'll show you in a sec. And then, if I can do this carefully, Got a different brush. If you saw my other video where the brush fell apart, this was the sister brush. It's still going. Okay, so I can do some floating down there, or we can, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and do that since I'm just. We'll do some chattering first. That's a nice edge to that. I'm going to have a couple of lines there. That's when they have to say less is more. But that's kind of nice. Got that to that. It's a nice edge broke. Still got to flute the bottom. So there's the top. This one has a nice big edge that hangs out, so I don't have to put one in there. And then, let's see if we can get this to work on here. Are you going to be able to see? I think so. finish a nice neat line. So that's what we have now. Okay. 